The Mara Serengeti ecoregion is famous across the world for its majestic landscape and wildlife. The Mara River is the lifeblood of this region. It traces a ribbon of greenery across brown savannas, hosting abundant aquatic, wild animals and plants while providing for communities along the basin. The river's waters are also needed for larger economic development to cater to the growing population. Much of the time, the river has sufficient water to meet multiple needs without threatening its ecological integrity and the ecosystem. But abstraction of water is a concern. To strike a balance between water users, the environment, and for sustainable development, water abstraction must be controlled. Currently what we are doing, we are coming up with the visa flows to try and determine how much we need to live for the aquatic animals and also for the vegetation. And that is also part of the water allocation plan because when you're coming up with the water allocation plan, you have to allocate uh, the different uses, different amounts of water. Like uh, as much as you have the river flowing, there's that portion that uh, human beings can actually use it. There's that portion that you can allocate for irrigation and commercial uh, uh, activities. But then again, you have to consider how much you're also living in the river so that uh, we also sustain the animals in the river and all that. And also uh, considering that this is being a transboundary basin, there are also other users downstream that will also need to use the same resource. Kenyan water laws and regulations have included environmental protection as one of the vital ways to maintain valid ecosystems like the Mara River. In fact, water allocations have the highest priority under Kenyan law and are collectively called the reserve. The Kenya Water Resource Management Authority, WOMA, has the mandate to set, protect and implement the laws governing water allocation, planning and management. To help WOMA achieve this, the Netherlands Embassy in Kenya, through the Mau Mara Serengeti Sustainable Water Initiative Program, MAMASE, is supporting WOMA to assess the reserve as part of the water allocation planning activities. The mandates of WOMA, they are basically water allocation and apportionment to monitor and assess the water resources. The other one is to regulate and protect the water quality. So in water resources, we have also to have the water balance, which we know how much remains for the ecology and the basic needs and the other users. So these uh, environmental flows assist us also to set the, what we call uh, resource quality objective. How much you require for the downstream and the ecology in the riparian areas. So these uh, exercises will assist Warma to make decisions and uh, precise decisions when allocating water downstream and uh, uh, the various users within the, the management and also to manage the water resources within the catchment. This support has been further enhanced through cooperation between a team of Kenyan international specialists working together to analyze the flow levels needed, commonly referred to as environmental flow assessment. We refer to IFLOs or environmental flow assessments as a methodology and approach to evaluate the effect of altered flows on the environment and to try and understand what is the minimum amount of flows required usually minimum in the sense that we, we we use water so we need to know how much water is required to keep ecosystems and processes and people who depend on the rivers um, satisfied so that we can use the rest of the water for other purposes so environmental flow assessments is what we do to determine that the team applies state-of-the-art techniques to evaluate the flow requirements of various ecosystem components and the data is integrated to determine regime of low and high flow levels needed to maintain the ecosystem. So what does the assessment entail? When we're looking at flow in the river and we're relating it to which species of fish that we're catching and then we're, we're looking at it from the sense of saying we need this flow to maintain this habitat which then maintains this fish species, we use that to help us set uh, the flows that will remain in the river so that we can keep things like uh, these catfish or these smaller uh, barb fish. And that way, then we're able to say, we need to maintain these type of flows for these type of habitats. And then we're able to say, okay, now what can we do with the rest of the water that's in the river. Can we allocate that to towns? Can we allocate that to uh, irrigated agriculture? So by having an understanding of the way that the animals are reacting in the river, and that's determined by flow in the water, and also the habitats which they require, then we're able to start uh, putting this into a water allocation planning process. I'm looking at the invertebrates in the river in relation 
to water quality, water quantity, and they are very important uh, food for fish. But also we use them as indicators of different flow levels. So we look at all these habitat types so that at the end of the day we are assessing an entire reach of the river system to understand what are the influences both from within and without. And what exactly do the researchers look for in regards to vegetation and the geomorphology composition along the basin? When I come out into the field is use vegetation that always grows along the river. We call that riparian vegetation. And within the riparian vegetation you get different sensitivities to flow. And we try and I'm trying to pick out all what I would call indicators. So this sedge, for example, would be an indicator. That young fig tree would be an indicator. But they have different water requirements. So they tell me different things about what they've experienced in their lifetime being there. <clears throat> I use that information to deduct which kinds of flows are coming through here all the time. And we'll set that up as rules that will define what the ecological reserve should look like in the end. Because remember that a reserve is not a a minimum flow that you're going to send down all the time. It's a flow regime, so it's got a dry season base flow, wet season base flow, and then on top of that, in the wet season, you've got different floods with different frequencies and so on. So what we're doing is we're measuring the shape of the channel and picking out particular features which are related to the flow of the river. So, for example, you can see um, over there on the side of the channel there's a bench and if you relate it to the vegetation, the vegetation is telling us that that bench is probably flooded maybe once every two years, once every three years. Whereas often lower down there's another bench which is the vegetation tells us it's flooded every year. So there's a very good relationship between the vegetation and the banks of the river. The vegetation protects the banks and the banks provide the habitat for the vegetation. So I work closely with the riparian vegetation person and we can help each other decide what flow levels are important to maintain that feature. Results of the reserve assessment and the incorporation to the Mara River Basin Water Allocation Plan will enable Kenyan water authorities to monitor and safely allocate water to other users for activities such as irrigation and for urban consumption. People need to be aware that the water that they have around them is, is not an unending, um, fine, um, infinite supply of, of, of this resource that, that we do not have a lot. Even though we're in the middle of Africa and we have a lot of rainfall here, we're in the equatorial region of the Nile Basin, which generates a lot of water, we actually don't have water to waste. So we need to start thinking now, sooner rather than later, and, and start to um, care about how we use water. And, and that we need to protect our, our, the, water, the water resources around us and the water that we, we use. For more information about the Mau Mara Serengeti Sustainable Water Initiative and the program's involvement along the Mara River Basin, visit our website www.mamase.org.